It took me a while to relax with all of it. It really did. After the unexpected news of her psychic powers at the age of 17. Not, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, because there's definitely stuff upstairs. Echo Bodine knows by now that conversation of ghosts and the afterlife often takes center stage. There was a lot of energy in this room over here. There's a lot of energy going up the stairs. Born into a family of psychics, Echo says it's taken time to get comfortable with her strong intuition when she was told what she possessed. I don't know, it was like this was so foreign to what any of us saw for our lives. Okay, so, God, um, oh, I hate this. He keeps, um, he keeps touching me like poking me and then what happens when he does that is that my whole body just gets chilled. It was like, okay, that's the good news, but that's the bad news because what does all this mean? And that's how it all started. In that time, Echo has made her share of house calls. Usually you don't get this clear of a vision. It's just really heavy, like, I don't know, man. People seeking her help to get ghosts to cross over to the other side. What is a ghost? A ghost is the soul of someone who their physical body has died, but we have free will in death. And so we can choose not to go to the other side if we don't want to. The main reason why these souls don't go to the other side is that they're afraid they're going to get sent to hell. Echo says all souls she's seen seem to share a common trait. When we die and we go to the other side, we start to look younger right away. Our soul, everybody in heaven that I've seen looks like they're in their 30s, all right? But if you're a ghost and if you remain earthbound, then you continue to look like your physical body looked when you died because you haven't gone on to the other side and started a new life, you are stuck. There is one particular ghost hunt Echo won't soon forget. Oh man, there were ghosts everywhere a house in Hastings, Minnesota, that belongs to Annie Wilder. Living in a haunted house is like living in a puzzle or a mystery. It's like being in a Scooby-Doo episode that never ends. A woman who has written about her more than 100-year-old Victorian home and the ghosts that live inside. A story Life to the Max has featured before. So there was a paranormal investigation group that came down from the Iron Range. And I loved it because they were super uh, tough guys and like I wouldn't want to mess with them if I was a ghost. But the, they said that they recorded more EVPs, which is electronic voice phenomenon or spirit voices, in my house than they had ever recorded in any private residence before. There's someone here with us. Can you tell us your name? I heard George. I heard George. Spirits like to be in houses where there are other spirits, even if they don't interact directly. And they also try to find a place that fits their vibe. And there was one ghost in particular. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, uh, he walked right through me. In Annie Wilder's case, she has figured out a way to coexist with the ghosts that have chosen not to cross over. Um, but this was a kitchen for Leon and his wife because they had the back apartment. And when we moved in, this. Um, back part of the house was where we felt the spirit, the ghost, the most. And what it felt like was like somebody, you know, like, can you, are you sort of aware? You can tell. Just barely. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, just went, kind of thing. So this was his kitchen. This was actually his hallway. And um, we heard a lot of noises in the hallway when we first moved in. People said they got sort of a weird feeling there. Oh, it's starting, oh, to go again. it's starting to go again. Here we go. The light's going out. Echo says in most cases that she's experienced, ghosts will do little harm. It's all the TV shows right now about ghost bustings and a lot of the focus on demons and evil. Um, I have to honestly say, I've never seen a demon. I, I don't even know what people are talking about. He, he looks like a grumpy guy. He's just kind of a miserable person, really. Sorry, buddy, but that's the truth. But in many situations, they can be pests, like the house call we tagged along on. <sighs> He's, he, he keeps saying to me, so what's the deal? What's the big deal? So what? So what? It's Echo's job to let people know just who they're dealing with and doing what she can to get them to leave.
You just need, you need to leave. You need to take your friends and go. Just go to the other side. Get out of here. Leave these people alone. She says if people feel a presence before hiring a Ghostbuster, this room is clear. Burning something called Palo Santos in your home can help. It's a Hollywood from Peru. What it does to me is, like when we walked in the room, into that room, it was just kind of in there. And th what this does is it goes and it just clears the all negative energy out of a room. And they always say the Native American Indians say to open a window or a door so that the negative energy can go out. But Echo has learned by now that not all ghosts are bad. Take what happened with one of the photographers getting video of this very interview asked about the presence he felt in his own life. But no, there is definite spirit activity over there, and it's a male energy, and it actually feels like it's connected to you, and that's why you can feel it the most. Um, is your father deceased? Okay, then I have to say, I hope it's okay, but it feels like it's your father. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.